And uh, just for the record, I think Miss Ferguson actually wrote a letter as well, I believe. And, I believe uh, it's included, yes. Yeah, I, I have read that it's attached to the PSI, but I'm certainly, she's certainly welcome to make a statement. So. Good afternoon, Dan. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Um, can you please state your name for the record? Uh, Millie Joan Ferguson. All right, you may proceed. Go ahead, Ms. Ferguson. Thank you. I'm Millie. I'm Timothy's youngest older sister. I'm two years older than him. One of my earliest memories I have was being taken away from my parents by CPS. My two older brothers rode in a car ahead of us, and me and Timothy rode together in the second car. And in every picture we have as a family, Timothy was always right by my side. We were the two youngest, the two smallest. We were the two that sat in the middle in the backseat car rides with the two small car. The last two to get hand-me-downs, the two that never had to worry about not getting homework help from an older sibling. He was always two years behind me, so every time I got to the next level in school, that's how many years I had to wait for him to follow along. When I was in eighth grade, he was in sixth, and there was a student in my science class that started talking about him, trying to start rumors. I stood up right as class was starting, as people were quieting down, and I shouted at him to never talk about my little brother. People could say whatever they wanted about me, I didn't care, but not about him, and never about him, because I was his big sister. It was my job to protect him. I like to say I don't regret things in my life, that every mistake I've made has made me who I am today, but when Timothy died, I couldn't stop regretting. I regret not hugging him more and teasing him so much instead of telling him that I loved him every once in a while. I regret not putting aside my differences with Shonda and Paul just to check in on him. I regret not dancing with him the last time I saw him at our brother's wedding. These are the things that I can't remedy now. There's no fixing what's been done. No way to redo it all over again. And that's my regret, that I couldn't protect him when he needed me most. Timothy was so smart. He could take anything apart with any tools or none at all. He had trouble focusing, but when he did, he was just as smart as the rest of his class. He made people angry, yes, but then he would look at you with those big baby blue eyes and you could never stay mad at him. It took me six months of therapy after he died to even properly feel the emotions of his death. And I'm still in therapy today I've been trying so hard since he passed away just to try to let people know of him, let people know that he was loved, that there are people out there grieving for him. I'm here today for him because I was asked to speak for him, because I was given a victim impact statement for him instead of a witness one, because the victim of this crime can't speak for himself. I knew him his whole life. I held him the day he was born, and I continued to try to hold his hand as long as he was in by my side, until he wasn't. I want the woman who killed my little brother to face the highest punishment possible. I want her detained for the rest of her life so she can't hurt anyone else. And I want the world to know that Timothy was wanted, if not by her, then by me. He was loved by me. Thank you. Uh, Nolan Ferguson, 